to say that for about the last year or so, the bikes that I've really enjoyed riding the most are in the mid capacity categories. Things like the Aprilia Tuono 660, the Royal Enfield Twins, the Benelli Leoncino, and just recently the Hunter Maverick MV500. It's not often that I come across a bike that I've never heard of, but the Hunter Maverick is one that's been completely off the radar for me, which is really odd because it's an Aussie owned company that's made in Indonesia and based on the bulletproof and hugely successful Honda CB 500X platform. I was really lucky to spend a couple of days on the Maverick, traveling the back roads, rice paddies and villages through Bali from Changu to Tijikula with James and Woody from Intrepid Moto Tours. So in this video, I'll put the Hunter Maverick through its paces and let you know if I think it's a good bike for a Nazi Goreng run. The Hunter Maverick has the same bulletproof, liquid-cooled 471cc parallel twin engine that's found in the tried and tested Honda CB500X. It has 49 brake horsepower and peak torque of 44 newton meters, so that's a pretty good base to start from. It's got Bosch fuel injection, a big 20 litre fuel tank, and fuel consumption according to the spec sheet is 4 litres per 100 kilometers, not bad. It's got a wet multi-plate clutch and a 6-speed gearbox. It has 41mm inverted forks with 195mm of travel and twin 300mm discs on the front with a 19-inch tubeless alloy rim. On the rear, there's an adjustable monoshock with 200mm of travel and a single 240mm disc with switchable ABS. And this is on a 17-inch alloy rim. It is 2,150mm long with a wheelbase of 1,460mm. It's got a seat height of 820mm, excellent ground clearance at 210mm and incredibly weighs only 178 kilos. It's got a USB charging socket as well as a 12 volt port and comes with a centre stand and crash bars. And there also seems to be plenty of luggage options available. When I first jumped on the Hunter Maverick, my first thought was how big it felt for what is essentially a mid-capacity adventure bike, but at the same time how incredibly light it was. It was obvious that this bike was going to handle the terrain we were going to encounter with ease and be really manageable and comfortable to ride. I imagine it was for exactly these reasons that James from Intrepid Moto Tours added the Hunter Maverick to his fleet. He also has some Kawasaki Versys 250s which were perfect for my partner Amber, but as a bigger bloke I felt the extra power and size was well worth the upgrade. It's got a good amount of power at 49 brake horsepower. Never once did I think it was underpowered, but keep in mind we were traveling the back roads and we were probably doing an average speed of about 50 kilometers an hour. There are a couple of great sections of tarmac where James and I could really wrap on the power. And in these instances, the Maverick did feel like it had plenty more to give. The Metzler tires were great both on the seal road as well as the bit of gravel we had to cover and are certainly a tire I'd consider if I was going to buy this type of bike. It's got good weather protection, even with the screen off, which I took off to get some better riding shots, but if I wasn't filming, I would have just left the screen on. The suspension was good and soaked up most of the bumps on some of the roads that weren't so well maintained, and it handled it really well, especially some of the quicker roads that were a real surprise. There are plenty of luggage options with a top box and panniers available, so you could do some serious long distance touring on it. But the thing I liked most was how comfortable it was with a great seating position and rider ergonomics. This is a bike that you could rack up some seriously big kilometers on. Overall, I liked it a lot, but I did find a couple of things that I wasn't so keen on. First up, the rear brake wasn't the best, but I'm sure you know this is a very common problem with a lot of bikes, so no big issue. Secondly, it didn't feel like an overly torquey engine for a parallel twin, but this is more likely because it looks like such a big bike, and I kept forgetting it was only a 500cc engine. Now personally, I don't think any adventure bike looks great, with maybe the exception of the Ducati Desert X, and obviously it's a subjective thing. It looks okay, in fact, apart from the obvious difference in the engine, at first glance, it looks like it's got a bit of a BMW GS5 going on. I did get the chance to take James's personal bike for a blast, which is the Scrambler version of the Hunter, and that bike looks the goods and goes even better. So out of the two, that's probably the one I'd go for. And finally, I found that it had quite a snatchy throttle in first and second, up to about 4,000 revs, although this is something you'd probably get used to or could fix with an engine remap.
Well, I think in this case, there are quite a few factors to consider when we talk about how much this bike made me smile. Firstly, I was with my beautiful partner, Amber, on a tropical island without the kids. Now, if I wasn't grinning because of that, there'd be something seriously wrong. Additionally, we were covering some amazing countryside on a route that was extremely well planned and visiting places that not a lot of tourists would get to. So as far as grin factor goes, the Hunter Maverick has a very good head start. If I was riding it around Sydney, I'd probably give it about a seven and a half, but as I was riding it around Bali, well, just like Amber, it's a 10. Bali is such an easy holiday destination for us Aussies because of the relative proximity, but there's always the risk of just hanging out with the bogans in Kuta and Legian, the soccer mums on yoga retreat in Ubud, or the oh so annoying Instagrammers in Seminyak and Changu. But the country has so much more to offer than these tourist hotspots. So we booked in a tour with Intrepid to get away from the usual places and see the real Bali. The trip started in Changu, and from there it was through Tabanan, working our way up north and visiting some amazing little spots along our way to Tijakula, which is on the north coast of Bali. Once there, it was the coldest of cold beers after our day on the bikes, and then it was the most amazing dinner of freshly caught mahi-mahi, wrapped in banana leaves, cooked over an open fire on the beach. The next morning, it was onto a fishing boat for sunrise to try and spot some dolphins before heading back to the hotel for breakfast. Day two on the bike started with a short blast along the coast before we started making our way back up through the mountains, stopping off at the Twin Lakes. We had a bit of a trek to a very secluded waterfall that was absolutely pumping before having lunch and heading back to the southern coastline and through the many kilometres of rice paddies and back to Changu. I'd have to say that the Maverick is really the ideal bike for this kind of tour. Would I buy one? Well, if I was in the market for a mid-capacity adventure bike, just maybe. It would certainly be on the list. Is the Hunter Maverick a bike you'd consider buying over the competition or would you prefer a bigger adventure bike from one of the larger manufacturers? Thanks for watching and if you'd like to see more of these tour type motorcycle reviews then let us know. That's all for now, stay safe and enjoy your next pie run.